Are we live? Fucking Can you hell, hear that us? Was loud. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, welcome back. to the Context Needed Podcast. We are looking like we may potentially be dropping some frames. Um, do apologize there. Uh, you're just going to have to keep going. I can't stop now. We are on the roll. I'm Kyle, joined with the trash man, also Hello. known as Ryan. <laughs> it's me, the degenerate. <laughs> Absolute cretin, more like. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Look at me zoom. <laughs> Look at me all. Ollie sadly still isn't able to be with us. Uh, we are hoping to have him back at some point in the near future. Uh, we're just not able to get him with us at this moment in time. But he's got a, he's got a troublesome SSD. A troublesome SSD indeed. It took him four hours, mm. but because he lives out in the sticks, it's impossible to update Shit anything. <laughs> I think I remember him telling me that's the reason, one of the main reason why he got rid of his Xbox when he got the Xbox One X. Oh. I think it was. Mate, there's no point of having them because you're just constantly downloading. Well, that no, the issue was even the main menu, like the dashboard of the Xbox, that was streamed from the internet. You taking the piss? No, I'm not. What kind of fucking design is that? So as soon as he went into that menu to try and go anywhere, it was all slow. <laughs> so he's he, lagging. He had he had no internet connection, does he? So. <laughs> Bro, you don't even lag on the Xbox One X home screen. <laughs> you don't well, know my suffering. <laughs> well, again, we want to open today um, just with another kind of thing. Everyone is struggling at the moment with lockdown, with mental health, being away from the ones you love, not being able to socialize with the people you care about. If you are struggling at any point... <laughs> fucking idiot <laughs> trying to be serious and you just uh fucking zooming in and out on your camera but yeah if at any point you ever need help just speak to someone there's always someone there to help whether it's friends family there's plenty of calls we, you can make we're gonna there's link plenty. again the um yeah we'll keep linking it whenever we talk again. about this we'll always link in the descriptions Voice. of wherever you're watching um there'll be links for worldwide places you can contact to get the help you need mm. and just understand getting help isn't defeat getting help doesn't make you any less of a person um in fact it's probably the best thing you can possibly do and it links in kind of quite nicely with what we actually want to talk about today because as we've said previously um all three of us um ollie included have dealt with our own fair share of mental health issues and um problems with our own mental health and we actually wanted to kind of to show people that talking about it there's nothing wrong with talking about it, as long, and there's no shame in it affecting you. We wanted to talk about our own experiences with it. Now, as long as we don't tell them about the bodies I buried, <laughs> then we're all okay. That's not mental health, that's just your physical condition. <laughs> yeah, I just can't stop stabbing people. <laughs> it's an addiction. <laughs> Look at me. I'm being totally serious. It's really awkward for the people that are just listening to us on Spotify or Anchor. Because <laughs> they, they can't don't... see any of this. They can't see any of you the zooming fuck? in the camera or anything like that. <laughs> I've got the zoomies, guys. Enjoy it. We don't have a Zoom business license. <laughs> this podcast will I can not borrow my mum's. Is... Should we borrow my mum's? On your mum's. <laughs> well, I don't know... Well, I don't know, would you like to go first with your experience with mental health, or would you like me to go first with mine? Um, I think I'm... yours is like a hell of a lot more kind of, you were, you were closer to like the depths of it than me. Like mine was bad, but my main, luckily I picked up on it before I got too bad. Got too bad, yeah. yeah. Um, well, why don't you, you go through yours, because then... We can then go into mine, and we can also look at ways. Like obviously, you said you got, you picked up yours earlier, and you was able to. Yeah. So I I'll zoom in for this because it's a story and a half. Children, settle down. <laughs> Get yourself some hot cocoa. Um, I don't know. I think it like it all starts off just from like school. And there was a. Uh, it was just the bullying and stuff like but it like it wasn't 
like I wouldn't say like I was badly badly bullied like there were some kids which were like they just had to like exist and they were bullied yeah well sometimes that included me uh um, you, you were targeted at least basically yeah but i mean like with my school the way it played out is like you just bullied back everyone just bullied each other it was like yeah. it was it was savage it was like there, there was like Human rights and like the, the what's it called? What was it we always meme about? The Geneva, the, the Geneva, the Geneva suggestion. Convention. The Geneva suggestion is but a mere myth in in secondary school. Okay, <laughs> well, um, at least mine. So I'm really sorry to interrupt. If anyone is attempting to watch this live on stream, I do apologize. We're probably going to have to actually kill the stream. Um, I don't know what's going on with the stream, but you're getting nothing really at the moment so what we're probably going to do we're probably going to end the stream if you are trying to listen this will be going up onto anchor tomorrow at 8 p.m yeah it'll go on to spotify and all of the podcasting listening areas so you'll probably just have to catch up there um but i'm just gonna have to end the stream and keep recording so just bear with we we would second. send you vouchers but we don't have enough money for vouchers <laughs> right Cool. So yeah, I've 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 just ended the stream. So everyone listening yeah, now, yeah. you are literally just listening through the podcast on Spotify or YouTube or whatever. So sorry about that, Ron. But if you want to continue, I will continue with my story. Thank you very much, Kyle. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think like that was bad. I mean, I didn't really confidence wasn't like a a, a solid thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it ever has been like. A massive strong point like i've had leaps and yeah. bounds and like jumps and bounds should i say and it's, it's it's mainly that i think that's my main thing is just like uh anxiety with my confidence and stuff like that i've uh it kicked off bad oh a couple years ago yeah i can't remember because it's all just i just find that everything kind of like blurs together yeah. I've forgotten the concept of time at times. Yeah. So it's like uh I I just had this like just I just felt like shit. Like there was no like, explanation for it. I just felt like utter crap. Like even talking with friends and stuff, I just like I just like it just felt like everything was too noisy. You felt, felt like dis disconnected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you get this point and you're like, I just need to kind of get away from it all and I was pushing myself away from everybody. And really, I probably ought to have been like reconnecting with a lot more people and yeah. talking a lot more. When um, you, I think it's there's loads of people, especially when you get to that stage. Loads of people constantly try to do the whole, oh, we'll just go out more, just talk to people more, just try and open up more. Mm. But when when you're in that frame of mind, um, I know especially for me, you when you hear that, you kind of recluse more. And move away from it yeah. more because it's you just the, keep getting told the same shit, but yeah. you don't want to hear just, it. Your brain's you hear, telling you, you don't want to hear it. Yeah, you hear the bullshit of oh, just just get over it, or this the man up bullshit kind of stuff, and it's like that that never actually helps you because mm. that's basically telling you it, to just fucking move on when you can't. It's a bad way of putting it, and the way I always to, I I always say it now after having and going to like therapy and talking with somebody about it um is what you've got to remember is it's all in your head like yeah. it'll be it'll, there'll be events which may have caused things especially if you've had serious traumatic events and stuff like that but that's leading on to like your ptsd and stuff like that yeah but what you what you've got to remember is you're the only one who can see what's in it at the moment i mean we've not hit uh, like Ghost in the Shell vibes, yeah, where we're downloading yeah. people on the we've fucking not, Matrix. We've not, we've not got ghosts and cyborgs and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that would lead more onto existential crises than depressive yeah. crises. <laughs> and I, like, it, it was it was a case of like, I was just basically, I'd come home from work, I'd lie down on the floor behind here, mm. put a pillow down, cry a little bit sometimes, and just watch like, I think I was watching, um, uh, critical role 
Yeah, I, yeah, you said you was watching Critical Role. Yeah, and I just, I just like wouldn't really like socialize. I'd like my friends in message and stuff, and then I like, ended up muting like Facebook chats and stuff, and just kind of like distance. And I actually left a load of them because what I actually found was one of my issues was is I was focusing my focusing myself too much on these group chats with my friends. And don't me wrong, guys, I'm like I'm not saying oh I fucking hate my friends. I really adore my friends, but the problem is with my friends group ship group is we're all very spread out yeah you know we've got people down in reading we've got people down in alton we've got people up in cheshire we've got people up in manchester we've got people down in uh well milton Keynes in northamptonshire now yeah. it, 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 it's a case of like we can't we're not easily you know it's not like i can just go around the corner yeah and they live like it's like your childhood friend where you can go around the corner and they live like just a couple of houses down. Can you come like out that. to play? <laughs> as long as you're back in before the lights turn on on the street lights, you're all right, kids. It's when you don't realize the street lights change the timings they turn on and you're late. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's. Um, it, 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 I just found I was like, I was winding myself up over like, you know, something that wasn't like like yeah it, they helped me i'm not going to say they didn't help me but in other aspects i needed to help myself before i could yeah before i could get help from other people and that's something i always preach and i'll always say to everyone is what you've got to remember is it's in your head yeah. and i say this to like all my friends i say it to people i really care about you know i'll say like look i'll be there like i support you and I think that's the thing is the problem is, is people say I'll support you, but then they start going, saying shit like you need to man up and saying yeah. shit like, well, what, like they don't, they don't take you through it properly because they yeah. don't see it from that, the perspective of yeah. yourself and how you are in, uh, how you are personally. Yeah. I think uh, the, um, the only the only thing I've always seen with like the whole like it's in your head is like yes it is in your head but I've had it where it's a very again contextualized saying mm. where when you are explaining to someone like look you have to understand these feelings these emotions these things pass it's just in your head it's stuff that we can move on from and there's nothing wrong with that when you're saying it in that kind of context it's all true it's all actually should be helpful obviously everyone has a different case and everyone's different but i've had it in some of the context i've heard it where people say oh it's just in your head but it's like yeah that kind it's how of, you're saying it yeah it's, it's how you've said it works. you've not just, looked at your yeah they're not taking in the situation they're literally saying oh, it's just your head they yeah like it. the way the way i do it is like i don't just go oh it's just in your head i go to people like because people like mm, even my sister struggled especially during lockdown and i said to her like look and i said we sat down and i said like look look at me what you've got to remember is you know you're doing all you can do at the moment you've not done anything wrong yeah and at the moment you're just beating yourself up because of thoughts that are you know that it's stuff that you're thinking like you're not doing it on purpose, but what you've got to try and do is the idea is to try and control those thoughts and like work on them. Obviously, with um, I can never remember the name of it CBT, yeah, CBT that's the one. CBT therapy was CBT. the one which was all about understanding you can't control random thoughts, you can't mm. control random emotions, and you can't control random feelings. And the idea is to see that emotion, that feeling, that thought, understand mm. it, and letting it pass. Because that's what yeah. I had to do, or use titties as a distraction, <laughs> which is my, which may be a coping method at times for me. Well, that's that's the issue. It's a coping method that just puts it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just always horny. Okay, <laughs> I'm like the Hulk. <laughs> I did. I, I'm not gonna lie. At one point, when you when you said when you were saying, I sat her down. I said, look, look at me, and I was just about to go. Now call me Oni Chan. <laughs> <laughs> no i'd never ask that from her she's a monster <laughs> she's like devil sister um no and i it, it's tricky because obviously the, the, the thing is is you can't like you see a lot of people who go into it and they try and depend on other people regarding it 
Yeah. And you've got to depend in certain idea. ways. But it's not a good idea because, like, like we're saying, it's something that's in your head. And unfortunately, at this point in time, unless some of these psychics aren't actually frauds, I'm not saying all psychics are frauds, but what I'm saying is all psychics are frauds. frauds. <laughs> um, you can't really expect something. And then it's this expectation that somebody's going to fix the problems for you. It's uh, it's what? like me. <laughs> it's like if I was sat at the desk and somebody called up and they were like, oh, I've got issues with me, my computer. And I just went, okay, then. And then not <laughs> just it. didn't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, it's like then when they go like, "What's happening?" I'm like, "Oh, somebody's gonna come and fix it for you." Yeah, I think that was the that was one of the things they they said to said to me a lot, especially in um, CBT was like, "It's all in good as having these sessions, but the whole idea is you have to take what we have in these sessions and work on it in mm. your own time because you can't have sessions indefinitely." Because no, you can't be sat in therapy forever. No, because that's one fair enough it will help you on those days but you'll have those days in between where you aren't working on it yourself and trying to provide yourself any kind of respite from your mental health issues and two with consistently taking those sessions you're taking those sessions away from other people that may be in more dire straits than you mm. i'm surprised i only had as many sessions i think i only had eight sessions um, i think i only had something like that I did. Well, how did you do yours? I I went in to the therapy you went in. sessions. Yeah. I had because uh, I was I was at a point where I was like I just don't want to be traveling everywhere. Yeah, it was. I don't want to be going into. Yeah, I like because I went. I went to like a there's a place in Long Eaton where I went to get my original kind of like they sat me down and kind of diagnosed me after I'd been to the doctors and they advised me to go there, but that's yeah. like. It was quite fast, to be honest. Like from what I've heard, I know there's a lot more places in the UK where there's a hell of a lot more people uh, on the waiting lists. Yeah, but what I kind of look at it actually, and I go, "What was you actually diagnosed with them?" Mainly just anxiety and depression. Mm. Not like severe though. It was mainly. I think it was just a very. It was. Was it, was it like winter, the anxiety but... was causing the underlying depression, or yeah, yeah, yeah. And enough. I don't get me wrong. I'm still like even today, like. I can, I actually, now I can, like, I've been through all this, like, beforehand, I never kind of put any, like, I didn't go put one and one together and say, this is what it is. So I know previously I have actually suffered from it. Not, like, I I will never, like, I've never, it's mine's luckily, and I'm so glad it's never been awful, because luckily I live in a household where we either, like we're, I don't know. We're always laughing. We're always trying to yeah. have. We're always making laugh, like having jokes and laughing. Yeah, we have other arguments and yeah, like that's just something that happens with families. Oh, like, yeah. Luckily, we've always been in a place where you know it's not been negative, yeah. which is honestly a, that's that's a big problem with a lot of households nowadays. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, like I now I can look back at stuff and go, ah this is what caused that and this is what made me feel like that you know yeah um, and then uh i've luckily been able to kind of control it quite well like i'll have my off periods now yeah like i think even you've seen it and uh, oh yeah guys I've, I've seen it where I do it i've shit. seen it and it's i think one big thing i always have to, i like to make sure people have like when you see a friend in those kinds of situations it isn't all about trying to get them to do stuff, trying to get them to talk to you, trying to do all this. A lot of the time, it can literally just be a simple, look, are you all right, dude? And then mm. when they brush you off that first time, don't take that brush off. Say to them, look, dude, seriously, are you all right? Mm-hmm. And then if they talk and they want to talk, shut the fuck up and listen. Mm. Don't interject. Don't put your own spin on it. Just listen. If they want you, nine times out of ten, I've seen with because I've, I've I've talked with you about things. I've had mm. other friends that I've dealt with before, and nine times out of ten, they just want to vent, and they won't just even realise they want to vent, but they'll just want to get whatever's on their chest out, and that's that. 
that in itself is a big step. If they want your opinion on things, if they want to know your ideas on things, they'll probably ask you. And that's mm. when you can put your own spin on things, when you can put your own ideas on it. But until then, just listen to them. Just, Jim, let, just them listen. Say, let them say what they need to say. I think a good thing as way as well to say is like how you look at things as well. Because with us two working in IT, I work very logically in my head. Mm. And then I also like, but I can also work. And I've recently realized like, especially now, like I work a lot, very kind of, not illogically, but um, chaotically. Well, no, I'm always chaotically, even with my <laughs> logical thinking. Chaotic. So neutral. we could fix the computer, but all we have to do is put a night a, a whole rat like mag of a nine millimeter millimeter through it. Um, Forever chaotic neutral, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, like I'm trying to think of the word. There's a word for it. It's like like the way you do it is like, are we trying to fix a problem? like legitimately fix something like are we logically looking at this and going like what are we going to do and how is it going to fix it or are we just here to support and give you yes the positive that's thing? um i saw there was someone yeah i saw online where they literally said it was like whenever i needed to talk to my family the, the question they would always ask yeah are we fixing a problem or just being support and that would yeah. denote are they going to ask questions and look at fixing things or are they just going to listen mm. and that's something i always say to my friends as well and i i I don't know if I don't. I, sometimes I feel like I just don't say it enough, and I say it's like I want all my friends to know. This. If you need to talk to somebody, I will listen. I'll listen to all my friends. I'll listen to everyone chatting shit and saying just saying what's on their head, what's causing their thoughts to be like they are, because you need to be able to open up to people. You need to be able to just spaff it out. Like we know that, you know, because if if you keep it pent up, then it's just. It gets worse. It's then weighing on your head even more because you're like, oh, only I know about this. But if you tell it, other people, they know. Yeah, it's... As much as people don't seem to see it in this way, especially I've noticed some of the older older generation don't see it this way, depending on where, like, cultural differences, you don't see it this way. But when you don't talk about it and you've got these issues and these problems, it it's literally a poison. And if you don't mm. get it out of your system, you're not going to water that poison down. And you're not going to be yeah. able to let it pass through your system. That's the easiest way I've found to understand it is when you bottle up your problems and your emotions and feelings. And sometimes, especially when I have my issues, you don't know what the issue is. And that's what made it so difficult to talk about was because you don't know what's wrong. But even mm. talking about how you don't know what's wrong and something isn't right and you can't understand why will help ease that poison. So, so obviously, you said you you went to the doctors. You got you diagnosed. How? What did you end up doing after that? Did you, you went into therapy? Did you go into like medication so, as well? I one thing I have always been with myself for my own mental well being is as like no, because I've seen it with a lot of friends. Is it just like the way it comes across to me? Is that you get a lot of people and they're just like, oh, but I'm getting like I'm going to get these harder meds. I'm going to get this. I'm like. I just don't, I don't, I hate being dependent on Relying something like on that. It, yeah. it just, it, it makes it look like to me, it made it feel like an addiction. And don't get me wrong, to anybody who is on medication in these things, it really is not an addiction. And you, you need to, you need to know that it is a valid way of coping because sometimes it is just too much for you personally. Yeah. At, the, um, at the end of the day, in your some... position. There's, there's obviously there's many, many, many different forms of mental health. I mean, we're obviously mainly talking mm. about like depression, anxiety, and things like that. Mm. But even in there, there's many different forms. And at the end of the day, yeah. if you are manic or bipolar, medication is pretty much the only way of keeping that in check because mm. that's not like stuff that's happened in your life that's caused you the trauma or caused you the negativity. That's a genuine chemical imbalance that needs to be rectified via that medication mm. and there's there's yeah. no other way around that from from my understanding obviously i'm not a doctor so i can't give you the full thing but from my understanding that is something that has to be done i i think yeah it's like you've definitely got to go at a point in like i would to any i would stress to anyone who isn't majorly like really if you if you like as you go through it with your with your doctor and your the therapist, the person at the therapy's place and whatnot, I would stress 
not instantly jumping on just like finding the miracle cure for it through a uh, drug yeah. i would i i would i would say look try it try talking to the per talking and yeah. get it out i mean i think sometimes as well just screaming just shouting just like depending on what it is let it out like crying like, Scream- so many so many people uh, are scared of crying in, yeah. I mean, with, with screaming, we've all seen my angry stream. Yeah, <laughs> the thing is, with the screaming and shouting, that has been proven to release chemicals in your mm. brain to help with these kinds of thoughts and emotions. Obviously, you still have to look at the other things as a long-term effect, but mm. I've, I've done it before where I've, I think... I can't remember exactly what situation it was... I went for a drive. I was, I, I was like, I'm fucking out. I need to go anywhere. And mm. I just got in the car and drove. Getting away from your surroundings. Yeah, I, I think I, as I well. I got in the car, drove, and I was on the A52. Yeah. And I, I screamed when I was on the A52. I was screaming as loud as I possibly could while driving, just because mm. I needed to get it out of my system. I hope it wasn't in the Picanto, because. The engine no, noises fu- would not have covered it. <laughs> it. It was the Z4, and the 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 funniest bit was someone drove past me as I'm doing this, looked over, and then dropped back. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> They're just worried you were gonna like start ramming people, trying to take out some pedestrians. <laughs> this man's gone insane. <laughs> Look at him. I think I honestly got nothing, nothing. Like there was a lot of frustration with the when we were doing this the the angry bunk boy stream but there's no i find there's nothing better it just felt so good to like just get it out <laughs> yeah it's like fucking get angry and like it just kind of like don't get me wrong don't get angry and go and do something you're going to regret no. don't go and like kick the shit out of people because that's not helping anybody no that will just getting put angry in it controlled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's plenty of ways to like get out your pent up rage. I mean, there's paintball. I think that's a pretty good, like, Con- your, it's 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 um waiver waiver form completed pain. Same with airsoft. Same with LARP. If you want to go and do LARP combat, because well, I know there's it, like a fair me, few places which just do that. Yeah, for me it was combat sports. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, kickboxing. Kickboxing, boxing, hell, it don't matter if it's the worst fucking gym out there. If it's got, if if they do punch some, bags, yeah, they do punch bags. The main mm. thing, if you're wanting to do that to try and like get that pent up frustration out, that's fine. Make sure you at least take a few lessons first, so that way, then if you do go and go crazy on a punch bag, you at least know how to throw that punch without hurting yourself. Because yeah, we've seen me. I've, I've seen I've seen videos of people <laughs> where they don't know they don't know how to punch. They're punching a heavy bag with no they no no boxing glove, no wrist wraps. It will break mm. your wrist. It will. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think people don't understand like when it comes to like fighting. I don't think people kind of like comprehend that it's not like the movies. No. You know, when you see like people kicking like seven shits out of somebody, it's like, yeah, that'd have probably killed most people, you know, if they, they were doing it in the way they do. Yeah, it's not even just that, but the one thing they'll never show in movies is how easy it is to break your own hand punching someone. Mm. There's a reason mm. why boxers wear these big gloves, and that's so they can keep punching, seeing as that's the only way they can attack. It's to protect their hands. There's so many fights out there in mixed martial arts, UFC, Bellator, where the fighter will finish the fight and afterwards say, yeah, I broke my hand in the second round throwing a hook. And that's why I moved away from throwing as many punches with my left hand because I couldn't punch with it anymore. Jesus. (laughs) But that's because they don't wear protection on their hands as much because you have so many other weapons at your disposal. But anyway, Mm -hmm. we're going on to a bit of a tangent there. So yeah, we're we're, we're getting back into combat here. Like we always, we always end up back on the same subjects where we're talking about either like guns or combat. Um, one thing as well with it is I think our connection with nature is definitely, it's dropping too much. I find. And like, 
there's there's this big thing about that obviously making green spaces and stuff for you know a healthier planet what i what we also need to remember is green spaces are amazing for healthier people because i love nothing more than getting out luckily where i live i'm in prime position i can (laughs) i can walk out my i can walk out my door and go like five ten minutes down down the the end of my street and there's fields you know i can walk through and walk through paths i think what people need to remember we're both looking in that aspect because we've got yeah yeah close to us i i think people need to like kind of look at that and reevaluate the situations they put themselves into um there's a lot of people who live in flats and yeah small places now in small tight confined places aren't the best for you and especially during lockdown it's really bad yeah and then I think with the it green spaces, as, with the green spaces as well, like it's a lot of people. When you say that kind of stuff, they seem to think like, "Oh, hippie, uh, nature yeah." Like, I, but, no. but it's 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 not to do with. It's that. really I mean, not. When you take yourself, at the end of the day, especially like with lockdown being like it is, if you're able to take yourself away from the position you've been in for months and months, and you go just to a field, and you just go and just go for a walk, you're away from. Car Don't go pollution. walking through farmers' fields that are, are crops, though. Yeah, w- walk on the paths. <laughs> walk on the paths. <laughs> well, yeah. So we're not condoning like, ruining the, crops. The thing is, like, when you go to those areas, there's less noise, so there's less no- noise out here is not going to affect the noise in here. Mm. There's less pollution because even though there's there's still pollution at the end of the day, we've ruined this place, but. When you go to a field, you haven't got direct pollution from local cars or lo- lorries or trucks. There's mm. smells which can change. At the end of the day, the smell is a massive part of the way our brain remembers things, from what I remember reading at one point. Yeah. And just just getting out of a horrible smelling city and going to the field somewhere and just walking around and you're smelling flowers fields grass cow dung horse shit grass yeah horse shit it's it's all things that can take your mind away from it Mm, i think the sounds as well like just being able to walk through a field walk through a field and just hear birds chirping yeah and i think i mean you can see by my room like since i've there's there's a bit of a problem going on here (laughs) like since i uh I kind of went and like found myself in this position where I didn't feel happy. I started to find new things that could. Mm. So my room is full of plants, like full. I I barely have any space to put them uh, anymore. <laughs> and I can't get new things because there's just plants everywhere. But um I can't watch my TV without there being a bit of tree in the in the bit way. Of leaf this, in the way. <laughs> honestly, there's like there's like it's like a little kind of. Let me let me. Welcome to uh, Ryan's. I'll room. I'll describe for the audio listeners because let's face it, everyone apart from YouTube watchers will be audio listeners. I don't know if you can see that at all. So I can I can see some big ass plant over there. That's what I can see. <laughs> Yeah, this is like that's over my TV. There's like a load of plants behind it as well that you can probably just see in the distance. This is yeah, very just I can see on the left. Yeah, so like, we've got some plants. Camera. I'm guessing that's where your TV is, either side of those plants. It's above this big green one, yeah, yeah, on the wall. But so it's gonna. Get I think blocked. I, like, and I think I preached it. I preached this to like a bunch of the guys in the office because I know, like, especially with what we do in IT. It's, it can be incredibly, incredibly depressing because there's it's, a lot of people who don't a, appreciate other it's people. It's a thankless hate. job, and you're always the mm. enemy. Mm-hmm. That's the that's yeah. the easiest way I can explain it. When thing mm. when things are all working perfectly fine, you get the well, if everything works. Why am I paying you? And then as soon mm. as everything breaks, everything's broken. Why am I paying you? Mm. That's the easiest way of yeah. explaining that kind of role. Yeah, I think like, and I said, I said to him all, and everyone was like. I brought these plants into the office, and then, oh, I'm taking some. I'm taking some plants back into the office after lockdown. Ah, uh, fuck, fuck HR, god damn it! I can't believe they're like, <laughs> oh, your plants. That your plants are getting away in the way of the cleaners cleaning. One of the cleaners comes up to me and goes, "Where are your plants gone? I used to talk to them and like walk to them <laughs> and shit." And I'm like, bro, 
this plant is not only helping my mental health, it's helping the cleaners' <laughs> mental health. Because goddamn, coming in and cleaning up after some of the dirty bastards in our office, goddamn yeah. it, yeah, you know they need I that remember. little thing. It's not been when obviously I rejoined. It wasn't so bad because there wasn't as many people in there. Well, it's because it was locked down. Yeah, it was locked down. There wasn't as many people in there, and you wasn't meant to leave anything on your desk anyway. And you had to clean your desk mm. after using it anyway because of lockdown. But yeah, I remember seeing some right mess. No, yeah, oh mate, like hygiene was not people's uh, strong suite. <laughs> I'll yeah. give them that. And they were adults, and I'm like, this is worrying. But okay. whatever, you are, you, know. you are grown men and women. It's come you- on. <laughs> But we don't know what situations they're going through. And I think with even some of the guys in the office, they were like, yo, like, I'm going to get some plants. They're like, I'm going to get some plants now that I've seen you, like, just with this small forest on your desk. <laughs> um, I think plants are something that's, like, people really just, like, don't appreciate anymore. I think there's a massive problem with the male community as well, um, where they are considered as negative in not, a not homophobic manly. St- yeah, in a homophobic kind of structure. Yeah, and I mean, I'm like, so the thing is, I'd, you I'd guys, like, I'm like, I'd like, like people plants. need to watch. <laughs> but the issue I've got is, my dogs would eat them, or we on them. Yeah, and I'm also yeah. terrible at looking after them. <laughs> mm. Mm. I mean, people like there's this big like, like every adult like male I've ever known is gardened, like he's done gardening. Like every like male point of like figure of you know kind of authority or like something you'd look up to they, they, they've always like in my family as well like they've always gardened with their wives and they've always done gardening so it's always something that i've kind of seen as like well this is something you do when you grow up you know you you get a wife you get a or a husband and you you move <laughs> into a house and you just start doing a garden to like slowly not be depressed about working in a shitty office all day um <laughs> But yeah, like, I think I think that's the thing is I think like we need to. It's not even a case of making our cities and making our urban areas more green for the environment. Yes, that is a key point. It's more for the we need to make health. we need to make them for the mental health. Like, if you, I I saw a really beautiful design. I think it was a it was either a Korean or a Spanish. I can't remember. I think Korea and is like, it the green Spain is it the, the green car park? No, it's there's a green. Um, I've not seen a green car park. I would like to see that, but it was a was green, it a green highway. Uh, no, green um, like apartment building. And um, it basically I've had like one, yeah. big running walls of like climbers and, and and things. And I think that's the big Didn't, thing is like I remember. I remember. I think I remember seeing that because they made it so all the wastewater that wasn't obviously like sewage water, like sewage water, water, yeah. Any of the wastewater from just like the normal taps or the uh, showers and stuff. Mm. Would would water all the plants on there as well, so yeah. they didn't even yeah. have to set up a watering I mean, it, system. And I think it's simple things. In like, I know people will be like, "Oh, you're just a fucking hippie." It's like, I know I'm not the best. I definitely am not the best because I'm quite um, materialistic at times. Because buying items makes me happy, <laughs> which is another re- probably re- like thing. Retail it's a way therapy is a thing. It might not be the mm. cheapest way of getting therapy, but compared to some private therapist, retail therapy probably is cheaper. Mm, mm. Uh, but yeah like um, using stuff that's more natural and like you can flush like if I like use my shower gel it's the uh, natural source is it natural yeah. source? original source, that's natural natural source. Original source. That's the one with original the um, that's the one with the tea tree and mint one that makes your balls feel like they're on makes fire makes your balls yeah, <laughs> yeah don't, don't <laughs> ever the... put that under don't, don't put it under your foreskin Jesus Christ that's a death what wish the... mm. Oof. If, no mate you don't want to try that I if I have that it's... stuff I usually have a separate one for the extreme delicate areas I'll use it on the balls because it's not mm. so bad it's for nice. me on the balls There's I've gotten nice used to it but in the uh, the extreme delicate areas where you have to get right in there to clean, I'll have like a Lynx or something on the side just in case. Oh, but, but don't use any of those old Lynxes which have the little like balls in them, the plastic. Oh, Matt. Mm. That's no, no, thank you. That's <laughs> well, That does not improve your mental health. No. <laughs> when you sat there in the middle of the day, you go, there's some itch in me. <laughs> And I don't like that. No, it's, it's 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 the awkward scenario where you've used it on the tip, and then you go for a wee, and it feels backed up, and it goes ping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, think I, I think use wait. So sorry, sorry, can I just finish on, yeah, the, yeah, on what I was trying to get to? 
is using stuff that is more natural as well. And I mean, as well, blokes. Fuck links. Fuck links, Africa. I'm sorry, but fuck links. Get yourself some natural sauce. I smell like fucking mangoes most of the time. I'm either mangoes or coconuts, bro. Yeah, mm. sorry, but link, link I Africa. Smell no, one needs, no one needs to smell like a 16 year old kid in secondary school after PE. Mm -hmm. No one needs that. Even I didn't use those. Like, I was like, I had links. And then my parents, like, we were still getting given them, uh, like, for Christmas. And I was like, no, this has to stop. This, See, I, 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 I get them, but anymore. luckily I've never I've never get given the Africa ones. Some of the other ones are okay for me, and it's literally mm. just, I'm using it because I was given it, and it's free. But mm. if I'm going out and picking stuff, usually I'll pick things like um. I, I've not had a natural. Lynx for a while because um, my auntie works on the boots camp like grounds. Yeah. So you get you get the, the one, good stuff, ones down the road from me. Decent. Uh yeah yeah the ones in um, Beeston in Knots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beast him. Mm. Well, um, yeah, you get the good stuff. So it's like it's not too bad, and it's like I think there's a lot of stuff the government should have done because I think this would have improved mental health a lot more as well. And I think there's a very, very, very big problem with us only just really kind of addressing mental health. Yeah, because we all go and work in these office blocks and. We, we just do it like a nine till five or think, we sit in our houses and do a nine till five yeah especially with the office work the main the main issue is i've noticed with office work is there isn't enough like out there isn't enough freedom in those works to just go you know what i need a break i'm gonna go outside and get some fresh air Mm. Because a lot of them, you could be, especially in Nottingham, you could be five stories up, getting downstairs and outside. By the time you're out there, you have to then go back in because you have to go through security. Um, and mm. that's, that's you've already had your five minutes just getting downstairs. Yeah. And that that's that's some of the issues. And that's one thing I did enjoy when I worked at Danbuster was we had literally because it was just one that was the ground floor, first floor, and you had the exit to go behind and look at the canal. And that, that was yeah. basically the smoking area. That was where I used to go smoke when I was smoking kind of thing. Um, mm. But you had that to just go and have a break if you needed it to. And because of what I did there, and I wasn't on the phones or any of that stuff, I could just go have a break whenever I wanted. And sometimes, mm. you, especially because I was working there when I was going through my issues, I did just go out there for 15 minutes. And then I'd come mm. back. Definitely. And, and it would be like, the bus would be like, you're good. I was like, I just needed a minute. And it was like, no worries. And they were very supportive mm. of everything that I was dealing with. Nothing, nothing's, nothing's better than a boss who understands and supports you in your situation as well. Mm. People like people who understand the awareness and the need for it is very good. Yeah. I think my my favorite place to work for my own personal mental health was the university. The university's campus was fucking so nice, and yeah. I hear so many people complain about oh. You know, at uni, and I have to go and sit in a lecture theatre, and I'm like, "Yo, if you if you're on the University of Nottingham's campus, just enjoy it, just indulge in how beautiful that place is, because yeah. it's another it's another one of these green spaces which is just smack bang in the middle of Nottingham. Oh well, it's well, yeah, it's basically on like basically. smack bang in the middle, really, and especially Jubilee where I was. And it's it's absolutely fucking gorgeous, like properly fucking gorgeous. And the amount of time and effort that's been put in to keep that place nice, I think more people. They, they, unfortunately, there's a there's a selection of people who just don't understand that, and they'll go and ruin stuff. They'll go and damage stuff. They'll go and vandalize stuff. Yeah. But really, they need to consider the uh, impact that has on others. Um. Because I think a lot of what we also have is people lose lose respect for themselves and they lose respect for others and they lose this yeah. kind of um obviously like not everyone deserves respect depending on what they do but there's like it's that basic you know consideration for yeah. people Decency. especially during a pandemic like the, like the amount of people i've seen just being muppets in shops and stuff like not social distancing all that kind yeah, of crap that's that think, we've, we, we need to just stay away from that we talked about that stuff too much mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think, but I think that's mean. It's like consideration of people is a massive thing, and I think that's it. It's like, as well, if you are helping somebody with something, and you you do talk to them, like Kyle said before, don't don't just jump on it and like say like start giving your spiel 
too soon. Yeah. Hmm. That's it. I'm going to stop rambling because I've rambled for like most of the podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> I've completely like derailed everyone just like chatting <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, it's um, it's uh, cause obviously with everyone's mental health was a bit different. Mine, mine definitely went completely, completely off the rails. It went south. It went as bad as it can be without me not being here pretty much the easiest way of saying it um, and if you don't want to hear of what we're about to talk about because suicide was nearly a thing for me um, suicidal thoughts have always been a thing for me if you don't want to hear that kind of talk and that kind of talk can cause you issues I'd suggest signing out now and not listening to the rest of this because I don't want me talking about my experience to cause an effect on anyone listening mm. um, because just someone talking about those kinds of things can cause adverse effects to certain people and I don't want that yeah. to happen when we're trying to help you and not hinder you basically because it's always for as long as I can remember pretty much there's always been like just darker thoughts and a dark like basically like a dark cloud kind of thing for me in my head Pretty much all the way through school, but I don't remember much of school. Um, secondary school, I, I was never really... I didn't really have friends. It wasn't Friends weren't really a big part of my life during school. I had like a handful, but I wouldn't really... Mm. I don't talk to them now. I ain't spoken to them since I left school. So they obviously weren't good friends. Um, but I pretty much used to like go into the music room and stuff and just avoid people. That was always my thing. And then college was where I first started to actually like branch out and actually get friends that I've known for, for years and I mean one of my closest friends I've known through college and I've known him for years now um, mm. but obviously it was around that time where I'm having more relationships and having more girlfriends and stuff and then I ended up, I've got this one girl that I've, I've spoke about with you guys off the podcast, obviously I'm not going to say names I'm going to say people because this isn't about that but I had this relationship where um, we took better, basically I had to take a year away from college. I had to redo my GCSEs to get into university, and I was with this girl during that time, and we we just weren't good for each other. We weren't. We we, we treated each other like shit. Um, on the ad, like I don't even know why, but we treated each other like shit as if we still fucking loved each other and stuff like that. But it it wasn't that way, and it's obvious looking back now we should have just left each other. And then I started to get like really, really down because of that stuff and the way it was affecting me and it kind of made me feel like just not human. The easiest way of kind of saying it, just didn't feel like a real person at times. Disassociating in some yeah. ways. Yeah. And I went to uni and then split up with her pretty much within the second day because kind of had a gear change and seeing different things and all that kind of stuff and that happened but then the drink happened and yeah, out, pretty much alcoholism was becoming more and more of a thing and then I tried to get back with her obviously mm. that never works out and I'm also dealing with booze and this and then the second time I don't want to paint her as like this evil person at the end of the day we were horrible Everyone's to each other initially. Human. I was horrible to her when I left her. Um, and then when we rejoined, she was horrible to me. Um, but at that point, I was so low in my own self-esteem, so low in my own kind of self-understanding, where I just let it all happen and kind of just, like, rolled over and let it happen. And then eventually she just dropped me anyway, which, whatever. And it was there where that dark cloud that I'd already had really started to kind of like kick in and I got worse and worse and I got to the point I remember in uni where I mean, just for for sake of people here like two times in my life I've nearly killed myself that's that's the easiest way of putting it this is the first time um, I got so deep and dark in this place where I felt less than human I felt like I was unwanted by everyone I felt like I was going nowhere everything felt terrible in every way, I wasn't doing anything I literally, I think I spent a week in my room in uni, 
when because everyone else had gone home for like um christmas or stuff i was alone i'd spent the entire week in my room i ate what was in my room it got to the point where i ran out of food i ordered pizza and got it delivered through my window because i was on a bottom floor flat that's how fucking recluse i was um and it was like at that point where i was i was just done i was literally about to just fucking end it all i i had planned out how i was going to do it what i was going to do and literally like about to start doing this and then i just froze and i think i ended up just i tried to call people but obviously no one was there and there was this one girl who i had i had a fling with who was um she was irish and i i I feel so bad because I can't remember her name and I genuinely there's times in my life where I wish I could find her again and just thank her for what she did because we had this fling it didn't work out then I had this reclusive period and she lived across the flats from me and I called her just a mess like I I don't know what's going on I I don't feel good everything's wrong everything's gone wrong and she just came around and just listened to me I'd been awake for like 40 hours by this point. She came around, she listened to me and we was just like laying on the bed while she was listening to me and then I just fell asleep. And I just woke up like I think 12 hours later with a note where she said, you fell asleep after saying what you need to say. I hope you're doing okay. If you need me, call me. Um, And I, I remember, I know we talked a few times after that, but it just kind of split apart because her friends didn't like me because of obviously we had a fling. And I wish I could find that girl just to thank her because if I didn't get to do that talk, I don't think I'd be here because of mm. that. So if and you're then, Irish and you know this monkey, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, if if you're the reason he's here, I need yeah, this man. If if you see this or hear this or you know me or you know her or you know me from uni and you know her, you don't even need to get her to get in contact with me. Just let her know thank you from me because i never said anything and i feel i feel bad that i didn't say anything when i should have because she literally saved me at that point in my life after that it kind of all like it was always there but it never came back in that way after that moment for a long long time but it was always there i've always had it here even to this day i still have it but i'm able to understand it and live with it now after what i've dealt with and then so I just carried on as normal, lived lived with it as normal, um, and then obviously left uni with Becky, did work, ended up working at Dan Buster Studios, blah, 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 life happened, and then things just started to go, like, just downhill again. Um, I don't remember exactly how long ago it was now. Uh, probably, probably not even that long ago now, I think about it. Probably like, I think it was just before you came, came to Little Fish, I think. Yeah, because it, it happened... The, the beginning of that year from when I came to Little Fish mm. the first time, so I think it was 2019. Yeah, because you came in, like, Christmas time. Because yeah, you'd already got Lassie and everything when you'd come in, like, we met and stuff like yeah. that. Yes, because I joined Little Fish the first time in September. Mm. Um, So, yeah, it was that year, but it was obviously building up throughout the year, and it was like, again, started getting those same feelings of just feeling inadequate and everything and down and me and becky were having arguments about stupid shit all the time um and it just you've not put the fucking toilet seat down you prick it was it was genuinely just stupid shit and things started to obviously like get worse in my in my head and my thoughts and feelings i wasn't i just wasn't doing well i think it kind of spiraled even more because i was obviously working at dan buster and i had pl- I'd put a load of work into trying to get the um sound designer role there and uh another guy got the role one of the it was one of the qa guys and fair play like he got the role fair and square he was better for the role at that time because he had more experience in the stuff he was doing but obviously that still hits you when that makes you feel inadequate yeah so it, it hit me really hard as well with that and then i was dealing with a boss who i'm not going to slander the guy but i didn't enjoy working with him um, because of some of the stuff and some of the scenarios that I'd been put through because of working with him and all this stuff kind of piled on alongside everything else and it was getting it was getting to the point where like I think I remember 
one night I couldn't sleep. I was struggling to sleep. Um, I was also I completely even forgot this bloody point. I, I was dealing with headaches. I'd had headaches for months where it wasn't as in they would come and go. It was literally I had a headache that wouldn't stop for months. And it was literally like here and here was just this pressure non-stop like completely and I've been to the doctors back and forth medication to try and get it to go away eventually every now and then it would give me migraines where I couldn't even take my head out under the pillow kind of thing so I was dealing with that as well which was probably also linked with this but we didn't know at the time and then so yeah so it got to the point where I couldn't sleep like barely getting any sleep every night I remember one night I ended up getting up in the middle of the night I came downstairs and I literally just sat in the middle of the living room on the floor in the dark and I just sat there I was just like what the fuck is wrong with me and it was the thing where I'm sitting there I'm trying to go through my head like what is wrong why do I feel so shit I'm living in a decent house I've just recently married the woman I love I'm living I'm working in a decent job with decent pay with decent prospects I can't see anything in my life that's making me feel this way. What the fuck is wrong with me? And I was just literally there. And then Becky came downstairs because she was she wondered where I was, asking if I was okay. And I literally said to her, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I feel this way. And she said at this point, like, look, do you want to talk to someone? Do you want to get help? And I was like, no, because I don't feel like I should need it. Because nof- nothing should be wrong with me. I'm, I'm living in a comfortable environment I shouldn't feel this way kind of thing so we, we, we pushed off and then it must have been a couple of weeks after that I can't even remember the build up to this situation but I end up I went downstairs I don't know if it was another one of the stupid arguments another one of the stupid scenarios I'd put myself through or whether it was me just being in a pissy mood or whatever but I ended up going downstairs I just went downstairs, I went to the kitchen, and I literally got a knife. I got the biggest fucking kitchen knife we had. And I was there with it, ready to just fucking go fucking Van Gogh on my arm kind of bullshit. And then I ended up dropping the knife, and it's at that point, things get blurry for me in what I remember. Becky explained to me what happened. I dropped it, she came downstairs, saw it, she took it away from me, and she went, what's wrong? And I literally just kept on repeating over and over and over again, I don't know, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, and I'm shaking violently apparently, and it gets to the point where I'm banging my head on the counter, shouting, I don't know what to do, until she eventually calmed me down, we had to go to A&E, go to A&E, now I've obviously as you see on the podcast I talk, I like to talk to people I like to communicate with people I didn't talk for like two days apart from one word answers I didn't talk for like two to three days after this point I ended up going on um, crisis team I think it's called yeah they basically you want to watch yeah basically um, I ended up going, they straight away had to put me on sertraline because of how extreme what had happened was they had to come around and check on me daily I got signed off work um, and for the first time in my life at this point I'd never dealt with anxiety I, I never got anxious that wasn't a thing I did I could go on stage in front of hundreds of people because that's literally what I did and never get anxious and all of a sudden after this kind of scenario I couldn't even be on the street when there was multiple people on the street. I was that anxious. They had to give me anxiety meds. And it was this whole scenario where I was on this meds. I had three or four days of just not talking. I was signed off work. It was this entire kind of like long, long thing of just trying to like get through stuff. I think I ended up after two weeks of being at home I was talking and I was taking the meds and obviously the meds would have a massive effect on the whole brain chemistry you go from 
not talking to not sh- not shutting up because of the way it affects basically the easiest way for for people who are never dealt with like um depression meds say your say your emotional state can go from a scale of 10 to minus 10 and say my scenario at the time and drop me to like minus 8 minus 7 when you first initially take what I was on which was sertraline it will just basically bump you way up to like plus 8 so you go you are really sad you are really down but you also can't stop talking and you can't stop wanting to be this happy person that you aren't I end up going to my dad's on this medication for a week just to kind of like get out of the house for a bit and get out of Becky's hair for a bit because she'd been dealing with me for so long and obviously it's going to have an adverse effect on her which it did and then every f- it's weird trying to remember all this stuff everything in this area kind of like blurs and me and Becky found out afterwards there's literally a there is a thing that's literally, I think it's called like mental health amnesia or something like that, where when you get into these states. Mm. I've heard of this one, yeah. You just blank out and stuff. Mm. I went to my dad's for a week. I, I don't, I, the only thing I remember specifically doing there, I took my um, audio recorder to, or, to record noises just for like sound design stuff. That's about the only thing I remember doing there. That's it. Mm. And then lots of the other stuff like at home, I. I remember I played Sekiro. Was That's it, it. Was Sekiro out then? Yep. It was a brand oh. new game at the time. And I bought it because... Mm. Oh, my, yeah, no, yeah. I, I bought it and I, I distinctly remember the reason why. And it was a very logical reason of... I'm struggling to deal with these thoughts. Basically, I'm struggling to deal with my emotions, struggling to deal with my thoughts. This is a very difficult game. I will have to put 100% focus on this game... To play it therefore I'm pushing all the other stuff out of the way to play this game and that's literally what I was doing which isn't the right way of doing it but it got me through it I um I distinctly remember actually um there's a guy I used to work with back at Dan Buster South African dude called Lance really 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 nice guy um <laughs> He turned Did he have up... like the perfect South African accent as well? Oh yeah, he had a good South African accent. Not the deepest. I've heard deeper South African accents, but he mm. had the accent. But he um he came round maybe like four days afterwards just to check on me, just because obviously he'd heard from workmates that I wasn't coming in, and I was bad, and he asked if I could if I could come round check how I am, just because obviously he's heard some things. He came round, asked asked what's going on, and I just had to say outright what had happened, what nearly happened. And he <laughs> I just, I just remember him saying, I should fucking kick your ass, you idiot. And then he literally dragged me out of the seat and hugged me. Like, the fuck is wrong, man? Just talk to me, man, kind of thing. <laughs> I distinctly mm. remember that. But obviously going forward, it was all lots of meds. Um, I was on a waiting list for therapy for fucking ages. Mm. Absolutely fucking ages. You can, you can tell there's clearly... <sighs> It's worrying. Like, I mean, when when was that? That was like 2019 as well. I was a similar, like it was a, it's a very similar time to me as well. And I'm just a bit, it worries me that it, like, I just don't, I don't understand like the, the, the lack of, the lack of funding we're putting into this and lack of funding we're putting into the NHS at the moment is actually incredibly it's worrying. It's awful. It's, it's, <laughs> It's scary because it's not just a case of the NHS disappearing. It's a case of this is people's lives and well beings. Yeah. And I mean, we don't want ourselves to get worse. We don't want ourselves to be in a position where we're having people commit suicide or or go through things like like just mentally, where they're becoming even more either yeah. physically or mentally ill because they're worried about not being able to pay for it. Yeah. And I think this is this mass, 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 just this, we're not educating ourselves enough in this kind of thing. Because, like, you see these videos where people are getting asked, so how much do you think an EpiPen's worth? Oh, like 50 quid. Maybe that's worth, like, nearly a grand a pen, stuff like that. I think that's the misunderstanding and the misconcept of the pricing on this and how valuable it is to the country. 
is very important because I mean, I mean, we could have lost somebody. We, I mean, we could have lost Carl. I'd have never met this man, you know. <laughs> well, it's it's and I, it makes me sad. I'm like I'm nearly <laughs> tearing up here, man. I think it's like it's it's crazy as well because of the way the therapy system works. Becky, who after all of this had happened, she kind of had a bit of a downturn where we we jumped on it straight away kind of thing. And she got into her therapy actually pretty quick, but she had issues where her therapist got ill or things like that. So she was kind of swapped between a few different ones at times. Mm -hmm. But it it must have easily took... Well, put it this way. I'd had everything happen. I'd been off work for, I think, two months. I went back to work part-time for two weeks, just doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just to try and like ease myself back into it. I then went back in at full time. I don't think I was even there for a month before it realized I just, I can't, I'm still not ready. Mm. And it, it got to the point where basically they, they actually couldn't keep me on. They'd done absolutely everything they could. Now, Dan Buster did an amazing, an amazing way of supporting me. They, they gave me loads of time to try and basically sort myself out they gave me so much support in every way um, but it got to the point where they literally couldn't do anything more apart from either put me on like a performance plan to try and get me back up to how my original work levels were or they basically paid me out um, I hope I'm not breaking an NDA by saying that but I'm sure I'm not um, every business pays somebody out like yeah but it was like, and if you've got a problem with this, you could deal with me. <laughs> but yeah, so that it was literally they were the, they were the two options I had, and I had to take the payout because I just knew I couldn't, I couldn't mm. go back to my original work levels. It just wasn't going to happen with the way I was still dealing. Not with at it. that point in time. Yeah, and I still hadn't had any therapy by this point. I didn't get any therapy until after making that decision. About a week later, I went to pick up my stuff from the from the office because mm. I obviously had loads of crap on my desk and bits and bobs so I got that back and it was only at that point that I actually started to get my therapy so it was easily a good three to four months it must be waiting. a case of you did it in person didn't you though yeah but so did Becky yeah yeah I, like, I, with mine I did mine online I did like a, a type chat because I was like I don't want to talk with somebody about this because I was like I don't feel I can properly get it out in verbal without just like spaffing shit yeah See, so that, i did type I was, chat i think I that's what people opposite. need to think i needed i needed the mm. person there i think to the seriousness to. i think that's something that we should probably touch on quickly sorry that's fine. is what people need to know is when you do do this even though we've said that we are lacking in a lot of things and aspects in this country regarding it but we are improving we can tell that obviously we've we've both I think nearly all of us probably had the support we need from the NHS. Um, but you, what you've also got to think of is the fact that uh, you can do it how you want to do it. So if you're really not confident with going in somewhere or even taking a phone call, like you're you're somebody who suffers from anxiety to a point, you know, where you you like talking on the phone is this scary. Calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it via type chat. You can do it in person if needs be you know, the yeah. option is there to have it in a format which is productive and to helpful you, yeah. for you they've they've really taken on board a lot of like the modern technologies and try to make mm. as many different areas as they can in fact i'm sure there's i'm i'm sure there's some mental health service out there that has its own discord it wouldn't surprise me because a lot of these mental health mm. services, they really do take on board like all the different ways of communicating a lot of the different modern technologies ones, yeah. because they understand, well, people prefer talking like through text chat. Let's open that avenue for them to have these conversations with us. I think one of the one of the difficulties I had, obviously, I did the therapy. I Luckily, by the time I was in the therapy, I was well and truly on my course for the meds. And I was kind of like on the level, so... Even when I, when I started there, she said, it's weird because even though I, yeah, I'm hearing your story and I understand you, how your depression is based off of the levels you've given me, because you have to, you have to fill out a form basically every time you go because it 
takes into consideration. Yeah, and you do like how you're feeling. Yeah. yeah, I had to do that online as well. Yeah, so you have to do that. And um, she said, when you first came here, you was, um, <laughs> funnily enough, so when I first went there, it just showed me as depressed rather than like severe depression or anything like that. And that was because I was heavily in the search lean and stuff. But I still went through the therapy and the therapy was great. My uh, last session, I actually left worse than when I started. And that was because Becky was going through a really, really tough period herself. And obviously I'm not, she's downstairs. I don't know if she's comfortable with me saying any of the stuff that we went through. So I'm not going to say, but there were, there were certain things said between us that were said pretty much like the night before or the, just before I went for this last session that nearly floored me kind of thing. And that's why I left my last session worse than my first session. But she also understood I, I, because she could see I was doing the work and I was taking what she'd said in and using it to try and help myself. And I did, I, I took in everything they said and I was eventually able to start weaning myself off the search lean because I started on, so this, this is obviously another big thing with this kind of scenario is talking about the medication. I remember when I first worked at Little Fish Review, we was at the pub and people were complaining about their medication levels and all this kind of stuff. And I just sat and listened at first because they were talked about either being... There was there was times where it felt like they seemed to be in some sort of competition with each other. Yes. From my that's... perspective. And it's a bit like, and that was a very unhealthy way to be thinking about things. Yeah. And I'm not going to call people out for it because no. it could be down to their situation specifically. Yeah. Um, but I hopefully it's improving for them. I, I yeah. don't know. I don't talk to a lot of the people that was, from that team originally. It was it was literally like you just said there. It sounded like people wanted to be on high levels of medication when I was there, and I just listened and let them through. And eventually, I came out and I was like, "Look, guys, I started on fifty milligrams, which is always the base start point, and." At my worst period, I was on 200 milligrams of sertraline, which I've never spoke to anyone else that was on that much. Um, the most I think I've spoke to is someone that was on 150. Yeah. But I know at my worst point, I was on 250 milligrams of sertraline. And with people thinking this is like a standard thing, it isn't. It isn't a miracle drug that's going to stop you from being depressed. It isn't a miracle drug that's going to stop you feeling suicidal. It's not. All it's doing is boosting your. It's boosting the good. It's boosting the, the dopamine the chemicals. and stuff yeah. in your head to force you to be happy. And the whole idea of it is to boost you high enough so that you can get through this dip mentally. So that way, then your standard levels up to a normal state so when you come off the sertraline it doesn't dip back down to that dangerous level but puts you back at the standard level so like i said earlier it's from a scale of 10 to minus 10 you're at norm minus 8 sertraline will take you up to 8 especially when you're on 200 jesus christ becky hated it because i didn't shut the fuck up like at all um push up to 8 the whole idea is through your therapy through just general helping yourself with your well-being and your mental health your standard level will go from minus eight to minus one minus two it doesn't even have to go in the plus it just has to go into a situation where it's not in a dangerous level so when you come off you're not at a level where you're going to harm yourself you're not at a level where you're going to be in depression you're just going to be a bit sad and then hopefully be able to work your way through it using the techniques you've got and that's what i had to do because i'm going to talk about I know we're going on longer than normal, but I think with what we're talking about, we kind of have to. There's kind of no other yeah. way of not going on. We can't really... I don't want to cut this at these kinds of points, so we're just going to keep going for now. Um, but so the side effects of sertraline don't get talked about a lot. And usually, from some of the side effects, people talk about maybe headaches or uh, in, some people have insomnia. The one they don't talk about enough of, which is by far, in my opinion, which was the worst, you can't come. Like, at all. That means no babies. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, you... look at me. Listen to me now. <laughs> I really mean this. <laughs> no babies. It it's it's a side of, it's a side effect that people You can't even wank. <laughs> well this is the thing though, you can, but what happens you know when you get that bill. These cobwebs come out. <laughs> well it's like you you sorry, you can come, but the easiest way of explaining how difficult it is think of that build up you get when you're about to blow your load. Yeah. Get a hoo yeah. Get a hoo yeah. <laughs> So when you're about to get to that point, now imagine no, you got. I need to that the nut. Point. We this is when we need the nut button. <laughs> yes. So you're about to nut, and say you get to. There's that point where you're ninety five percent there, and then your big dumb vampire mummy stops wanking you off. That's pretty much what happens. <laughs> you go up to ninety five percent, and then you just drop back down, or you stay at ninety five percent. And it's to the point where it's impossible to kind of like get over that hump. Um, and that I was at two hundred milligram, and it literally it it made my sex drive go to zero. It can, was can horrendous. I, can I ask how good was the first wank you had after like we like wheeling yourself off it? How how satisfying was that? <laughs> Wait, we need took, to know. <laughs> it took me a while to wean off of it because obviously I was on two hundred. Yeah, yeah. So it took. You have to like a... drop it slowly. Well, I think I went from two hundred down to one fifty. That was what the doctors ended up doing. I then went to one hundred by the doctors. Um, I then personally myself decided, um, I'll try to go maybe to fifty. Um, but. The issue was by this point, I felt like a shell. I didn't feel human, and that wasn't because of the depression in the way I was previously. It was because the emotions I had weren't mine. They weren't what I was feeling. It was what the chemicals were making me feel. So eventually, I just went no, and I just stopped. And luckily, because I'd taken on the CBT, I was able to use all those techniques for that inevitable dip that I had but yes after maybe say two weeks of being off maybe three weeks of being off when it would thoroughly out of my system that first nut was impressive to say the least my man. <laughs> let's just say they've done tw they've done tw like hundreds of deep cleans in that bathroom and it's still sticky. <laughs> that's some potent shit you've got there, my boy. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a side effect that a lot of people don't talk about. Because at the end of the day, sex and masturbation are very good ways of releasing dopamine <laughs> and helping with your mental state. And don't go shagging about, though. That's not a good idea. Oh, yeah. We're not uh, you're, you're, be man. you're better off using a good old Pamela Henderson than just going and oh. finding people you shouldn't be having sex with. Invest in maybe a... Um, Own a hole. An oni hole, yeah. Mm. Otherwise oh, known as oh. the Japanese fleshlight. <laughs> it, well, that's made me think of a fucking... I saw a, somebody's who's got an advert for a fleshlight for dogs this morning. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. No, this shouldn't be. Do you know what that actually is for? If you, if you fucking Peter Case Phoenix. Is he, is he drawing a dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's his toy. That is right there. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. it's definitely something that people need to be aware of is the, the medication is it is not the winner. The medication is just a supporter. And mm. especially a lot of people I've talked about, they rely on it too much. Now, like we said previously, there are certain... It's not degrading them. No. It's not I'm degrading not, I'm them. not degrading you. At the end of the day, I needed those tablets. And that's not me saying I needed them as an addiction. I, f I needed them to not hurt myself. To put it into perspective how much at risk I was, all the knives in the house were hidden. I think for the first week, I didn't even eat dinner with a knife. I had to just use a fork. That medication 
save me. But you can't just focus on it. You can't we depend up, on it. Yeah. We ended up going and getting uh, my lovely dog, Lulu. And I I say this many times to people, and they seem, they seem to think sometimes like I'm joking. That dog saved my life. If if I don't I didn't have that dog, I'd probably still be on high levels of medication now. She made me so much happier in every way because I was going out, I was doing walks. She's got the the dog gave me unconditional love at every point in time, even when I felt felt down. And that's that's why I'll always say like a dog or even a cat. Obviously, you're a cat person. I'm a dog person. Having those pets around you that show you that unconditional love really help but you need to understand that the medication will not give you the answers it will just it will bide you time to find those answers if you're in the position i was in i mean and let's be honest you're gonna want a nut again let's just yes. put it that way i mean yes. gee i can't even oh oh I'm so glad I would like when they said to me, "Do you want to know?" No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> I like coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's it's. I, I I still find it funny how that's not talked about that much. Of, of, I think I can effects. remember somebody's mentioned it, but I forget about it. And like yeah. now you've re-mentioned it to me, I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, oh Lord. It's it. I struggle. I like, struggle just in a couple of days, especially the, at the moment. Jesus. Yeah. The thing is, it isn't even like this. Isn't just a side effect that's limited to dudes. I spoke to girls that have yeah, yeah, the same affects. issue, and obviously, there's from what from obviously, I'm not a female. I don't understand the female anatomy as much as an actual female. But from girls I've spoken, where to, is the glitter? <laughs> <laughs> but from like points girls, at nose, it's here. <laughs> but from girls I've spoken to, it's difficult for them to finish themselves or finish in a sexual encounter. Like in general, well, they already let alone, have that. They already have that issue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let alone when you've got a chemical literally going. Nah, fam, you don't want this, <laughs> bro, bro. It's... Buy plants, honestly. Buy plants. I think that, like, obviously, plant with, family. with the with the with the how serious this one's been. Obviously, we've tried to do like lighthearted moments at times with because we you have to you try can't. and be like yeah you have to try and be lighthearted about things. You have to. It's like. I'm not going to uh, have a go at someone for making a suicide joke because at the end of the day, humor's always built from, from bad scenarios. And mm. I have and to I'll make... fucking do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to make light of my situation because I want people to understand, like, it's like we said, well, when we did Be, the first... Being able to mock yourself yeah. and not... Don't take yourself so seriously because I think that's that that's something that happens. Is you kind of take yourself too seriously at times. Yeah, well, I think it was like we said when we did the first time. We said, "Look, get the help you need," kind of thing. Mm. I, I've openly spoke about this because I want people to understand. N- nothing about me has changed. I'm still the big fucking six foot three monkey I was. He's got if- a beard now, though. <laughs> yeah, I got a beard from it. Because I just didn't shave because of the lack of emotion that I had, and it just kind of stayed. But I'm no less of a human. My family still loves me. My wife still loves me. My dog still loves me. I think it was like a week after the scenario, my mum literally went and bought me a card, and the card literally just goes in like, don't ever. It's basically just kind of one of those cards. It's explaining like, don't <laughs> see yourself lesser than what you are, kind of thing. I literally the fi- I'm so sorry, but the one thing that comes into my mind is like her just getting you a card that just says "man the fuck up." Yeah, <laughs> like, just she, like Come on. I think I think she bought it because she just she literally had no idea what to do. She you don't. She didn't know what to. So in in my family, none of this kind of stuff has ever come up, ever. Mm. And I remember it was the day, because obviously I'd been through, I was in the hospital at midnight, basically, when it first kicked off. My dad came around the next day and just grabbed me and held me and just cried and just tr- just tried to talk to me. Obviously, I just wasn't talking. My mum came around and just grabbed me and held me and cried kind of thing. And it was just because they just they, people just don't know what you to do. You don't know what to do. Yeah. You don't want to lose you as well. That's the thing. It's scary. Yeah. It's a scary moment. 
And all and I can think of him is grabbing you and going, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I need, I need people to know there's nothing wrong with being Emotions sad. Emotions are a there's, thing. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being sad. There's nothing wrong. At the end of the day, I still to this day have thoughts like that. And there's nothing wrong with that because they are literally just random thoughts. That's all they are. But you, if at any point you ever feel like any of the situations like we've had or even other situations that have made you feel any way like we have, talk to someone. Get the help you need. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. Mm. You don't need to be the big macho man that never has a problem. You don't need to be the perfect princess lady who can do everything herself. You don't need to be the superhero. You just Return human. to monkey. Return to monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Send pictures of your nut sacks to your best mates. <laughs> but I think Get we'll dressed um... up in a dress and a blue wig and stop yeah, tormenting exactly. your friends. <laughs> stop taking everything so seriously. And get a bit get wild. Help. Yeah, and just get the help you need. There's nothing wrong with it. I think with that, we've obviously we've ran over longer than we normally would, but I think with the kind of subject matter we talked about, we kind of had to. There was there you was can't, no, you can't. I mean, I think I took way too much space on the first one. Uh, my like with just mine, and mine was nothing. And like I've never really, I think even from my perspective, I've never kind of completely gone through the full story with yourself. And I've heard like you've you've told me you were in the situation, you know, where it was, you know, it was nearly that, you know, could have gone. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm going to not say anything else because I'll probably just end up crying now. <laughs> I'm holding it in. <laughs> I'm going to be the happy, smiley chap. I'm not crying. Well, it's just raining here. <laughs> well, terrible like so, rain we've got. We'll, uh, we'll close off. As we said, we're going to put links in the description of everywhere you can see this to for help around the world. Even if you're just feeling a little sad, just go look. You never know what you may be dealing with. Just get the help you need. With that, we're going to close. Hope next week, we're going to do something much more lighthearted. We're going to yeah, do we'll do something fun. Complete opposite. Whether it's talking bullshit, complaining about stuff, ranting about stuff, we'll do something completely different. We're still going to open up with the same old. If you need help, get it because that's just something that's very serious at the moment in time. But we are going to do something more lighthearted. With that, again. This wasn't streamed because it just went to shit. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for coming by. If you want to send support, shit posts, memes, or anything like that, or even if you want to ask, um, like for the links directly to us, or anywhere tweet for, us. directly, tweet us at tweet. context needed one. We Ryan's the one that looks at, looks after it mainly, but we all look at it. We all see always it. Always on there. So or on my computer. We can I always... mean, I'm not going anywhere. I'm always in my room. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, so sh- maybe not post. at midnight GMT. I might be in bed then. <laughs> but yeah, send us a shit post. Send us a stuff. Send us the questions. Uh, whatever you can do it there. For the more formal, formal, very formal forms of contact, you have to email us for instructions which we'll hand over to you. Some of the tasks include a typewritten letter where you have to have a cigarette, a 20 pack of cigarettes, or a cigar. (laughs) And a typewriter. And a typewriter to to have that aroma. And it also has to be owl delivered. There are more instructions, so you'll have to email us to get the rest of those instructions. And that will be contextneededuk at gmail.co.uk. But with that, thank you all, guys very much for listening thanks for all the support share it with your friends if you've got any friends that are struggling with anything share this to them and let them know they are cared for and they can get the support they need but with that fucking love you (laughs) from me Kyle and Ryan who's only a quarter of his head now (laughs) we will see you guys next week thank you very much bye bye now Have a wonderful time. Big kisses.